We all have trouble sleeping every once in a while. But if you regularly have difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, waking up and not being able to fall back to sleep, you could be putting yourself at risk for the consequences of insomnia. These include trouble interacting socially, memory problems, difficulty thinking clearly and remaining alert, and decreased productivity. And they often miss more work days than their counterparts without insomnia. If you're not sleeping well, it's going to have an impact on your immune system. It's going to have an effect on your alertness. Virtually every psychiatric condition, be it anxiety, be it depression, or more serious conditions, um, are associated with sleep difficulty. Individuals who have chronic pain and insomnia experience greater pain and more physical symptoms. If you have insomnia, it's pretty much a given that the pain will be worse. You will suffer from the pain more than you would have otherwise. Insomnia is also associated with substantial health care costs, social and physical consequences, and an increased risk for a number of medical disorders. There's some very interesting studies now to show that people who don't get sufficient sleep at night are at increased risk for weight gain, for cardiovascular disease, hypertension, stroke, diabetes. Any one of a combination of factors can contribute to or cause insomnia. Older people with insomnia are more likely to have difficulty maintaining sleep and to experience early morning awakenings when compared to younger people. Some of the estimates are that roughly 10% of the population in this country will have difficulty with insomnia. Four primary characteristics define insomnia. Difficulty falling asleep, difficulty maintaining or staying asleep, early morning awakenings without being able to fall back to sleep, called sleep maintenance insomnia, and non-restorative or poor quality sleep. Usually, we think of insomnia as the guy who can't fall asleep. It turns out that difficulty staying asleep is a much more significant problem than difficulty falling asleep. While the actual cause of the difficulty sleeping may be a mystery, it's important for health professionals to determine if the insomnia is short-term, lasting merely a few days, or chronic, more than three nights a week for at least one month. There are a number of treatment options. Sleep hygiene is one. Going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time, having the same kinds of behaviors before you go to sleep. These are the kinds of things that we mean when we talk about sleep hygiene. Some people may need a form of talk therapy called cognitive behavioral therapy to help them sleep better. That's a proven therapy that is effective in the treatment of insomnia. It has to be administered by a trained therapist, but people who undergo a course of cognitive behavioral therapy can often learn to better manage their insomnia without medication. There are also over-the-counter products that can help under certain circumstances. The chemicals in these products tend to make a person drowsy. Over-the-counter preparations are quite effective when used for a night or two. The problem is they can have next day side effects. So you're not always getting the benefit of a good night's sleep in terms of next day sharpness and alertness and, and feeling really good. You can end up with somewhat of a hangover. There are several different types of prescription medicines available to treat insomnia that work differently. There are uh, some medications that work um, on what are called the GABA receptors in the brain. It's the primary neurotransmitter that's responsible for sleep. So they have the effect of uh, sort of making sleep happen in that way, chemically. There's another compound that came out quite a few years ago that affects the melatonin receptor. Melatonin is a hormone that plays a significant role in the timing of when we get sleepy. What it does is it partially helps your body temperature drop so that it's mimicking what it's supposed to do. And there is a new medication that works on the histamine neurotransmitters in the brain that affect wakefulness. Your brain secretes histamine at various times throughout the day, and the antihistamines have the effect of suppressing that wake promotion. So it can help people stay asleep, but it doesn't seem to have the hangover effects. 
so it's important for people to speak to their doctor about what medicine is right for them. Some people who have chronic insomnia try to self-medicate with caffeine to keep them awake during the day, and then perhaps alcohol to put them to sleep at night. But the experts say that's the wrong thing to do. It makes it difficult for someone to fall asleep, and then as they sort of withdraw from the caffeine, it can actually cause awakenings. And the same thing with alcohol. Alcohol may make you sleepy initially, but several hours later when the alcohol leaves your bloodstream, it actually wakes you back up again. Sleep researchers say now is a very exciting time because of new understandings about the value of getting a good night's sleep. There's increasing awareness on the part of the medical professionals in terms of insomnia and, and what it can do to not only uh, their patients in a primary way, but also many of their comorbidities that can be improved if they just recognize and treat the insomnia that may go with them. If you think you may have insomnia, it's important to partner with your doctor. He or she can suggest ways to improve your sleep, which may include taking sleep medicine. To answer any specific questions you may have, be sure to contact your healthcare provider.